So Edward Snowden did a really, really fascinating interview with Brian Williams. And um, he's selling a new book, so he's doing, I guess, a little bit of a press tour here. But this was actually, to my surprise, a very detailed interview. And in this clip that you're about to see, he's going to lay out the capacity of the government to illegally spy and data mine. And this is like a, this is a stark reminder of the power that they really have. Because oftentimes we forget and we don't pay attention to it, but it's there. It's there and they're not using it for good. They argue, oh, this is for national security. But as Snowden actually laid out quite eloquently later on in this interview, he said, no, it's about power and it's about control. So look at what they have the capability of uh, doing and be terrified. What today can the government do uh, to your phone and your laptop, the phone and laptop of any American? Um, what's the extent of the government's reach if they're determined to reach into your life? <laughs> uh, we could talk about this question for hours, <laughs> Brian, but we don't have time, so I'll, I'll try to summarize. Um, hacking uh, has increasingly become uh, what governments consider a legitimate investigative tool. They use the same methods and techniques as criminal hackers. And what this means is they will try to remotely take over your device. Once they do this, um, by detecting a vulnerability in, in the software that your uh, device runs, such as Apple's iOS or Microsoft Windows, they can craft a special kind of attack code called an exploit. They then launch this exploit at the vulnerability on your device, which allows them to take total control of that device. Anything you can do on that device, uh, the attacker, in this case the government, can do. They can read your email, they can collect every document, they can look at your contact book, they can turn the location services on, they can see anything that is on that phone instantly and send it back home to the mothership. They can do the same with laptops. The other prong that we forget so frequently is that in many cases they don't need to hack our devices. They can simply ask Google for a copy of our email box because Google saves a copy of that. Everything that you ever typed into that search box, Google has a copy of. Every private message that you've sent on Facebook, every link that you've clicked, everything that you've liked, they keep a permanent record of. Uh, and all of these things are available not just to these companies, but to our governments as they are increasingly deputized as uh, sort of miniature arms of government. What about enabling your microphone camera? If you can do it, they can do it. Uh, it is trivial uh, to remotely turn on your microphone or to, to activate your camera so long as you have systems level access. If you had hacked someone's device remotely, anything they can do, you can do. Uh, they can look up your nose, right? They can record what's in the room. The screen may be off as it's sitting on your desk, uh, but the device is talking all of the time. The question we have to ask is, who is it talking to? What else do I need to say here? Now, it, you know, if you are inclined to believe, but terrorists, man, terrorists. I mean, that's really what this is about. No, because when, when the story initially broke, we got actually a bunch of stories over an extended period of time. And one of them was the NSA... You had people at the NSA spying on their significant others. And it was such a common practice, they had a term for it. It was called Love Int, short for Love Intelligence. And they would just violate the privacy of their significant others, hack into their devices, see what was going on. The idea, like the people who are running these systems are just people. They're not like this idea that what? They're part of this official entity that is the government, therefore they're on like a higher plane in terms of morality and ethics. No, they're people. Why would you trust a random person to have total access and control of your phone? Why is that even an option? And again, that's something later on Edward Snowden goes on to point out. The issue is not even just... Hey, how, how do we manage, how do we regulate the collection of this data? Like, what's allowed, what's not allowed? He says the issue is the data collection in and of itself. So there's no, there's no law that says 
that these, you know, um, social media companies or internet companies can't, search engines, whatever it might be, that they can't keep, like, a permanent record of you. There's no law of that. There's no, like, oh, after a year, all that data needs to be deleted, and then it starts again, and after a year, it gets deleted again. He says they, they can take whatever, and there's no violation of the Constitution there. So the government could just ask them, hey, hook a brother up with some information on this person and this person, and they have a permanent fucking record of everything you've ever typed in. So he's saying not only do they have the access to hack into any, you know, device you have, but also sometimes they don't even need to do that. They could just go right to Google and be like, help me out. Or whoever it may be. Facebook, I'm sure all these companies are more than willing to bend over, take it from the government for a variety of reasons. So, like, we didn't, people didn't even realize. We blinked. We blinked, and all of a sudden we were in 1984. <laughs> it just happened. It, and it all you know, in a weird way, it was somewhat voluntary because we're all more than happy to welcome these devices into our lives that uh, are then used, weaponized against us. And again, it's got nothing to do with terrorism, national security. It, it's about power. It's about control. It's about domination. It's about, you know, having this, like, centralized command center. Sorry about that beeping in the background. I know you guys know the story behind that already. But it's about having this centralized... It's about having this centralized command center where you can keep everybody in check. What happens in the future? Somebody wants to run for president, okay? And maybe they're into some weird um, sexual shit. How hard is it for the deep state, the intelligence agencies, to just, you know, leak a story about, oh, look at what this person's into? And then, boom, that alone is could be massively embarrassing and then could hurt the person's chances. This can be used in so many nefarious ways that we haven't even really contemplated. And it's, uh, it's the end of privacy. That's what it is. It's the end of privacy. If you gave people an option, imagine you had an option. Everybody got to pick. Do you allow these companies and the government to access your device? Do you allow them to keep a permanent record of you or not? My guess is over 90% of people would say, no, they're not going to, no, they're not going to get to keep a permanent record of what I do. And absolutely not. That's so invasive. But of course, we don't have that option to like opt out. And isn't it creepy now too? I mean, this is a little bit of, this is a side point, but you could be having a conversation with somebody and bring up a product. And then next time you go online, you're being advertised that product. And it could literally have been a conversation in the privacy of your own home. Where none of you were using your, your smartphones. But you're having a conversation about whatever it might be. Whatever product. You fill in the blank. And then you get... I fucking hate this laptop, bro. And then you get an ad for that product that you never typed in to the search engine. You never, you know, mentioned directly on your phone. Or sometimes it happens that it'll, you'll be in text conversation and you'll say a product and then you get an advertisement for it. There's not... Bro, they got everything, all right? Not to sound Alex Jonesy on you, but they have everything. And you're telling me this dude who let us know that the government's taken all this information, and by the way, illegally and unconstitutionally, not according to him, but according to some courts that have heard cases on this stuff. This guy is the enemy? No, no, this guy's the hero. This guy's the whistleblower. So, it is, uh... It's a shame that he's been persecuted and he still can't come home because he wants to come home. And he lets that be known later on, but he would not be given a fair trial, so he hasn't come home. But they have all of the powers that you think they have. Everything you see in the movies, they have that, for real. <laughs> so, we need a movement in this country that's a mass movement that also addresses this issue, because... 
All the other stuff we fight for is massively important as well, but this is equally as important.